as we have come here this uh, special Sunday. Lord, we thank you that lives will be transformed. Amen. We thank you for the conviction that will fall off on your people this morning. We thank you for uh, this platform. We thank you for your word, that we continue to look at your word as a mirror. Lord, we thank you for the, the gift of tongues. You have given us this heavenly language to intercede, you know, to change lives, for us to be able to withstand, for us to represent you faithfully on the earth. Lord, we thank you that we'll continue to walk in your nature, in your holiness, to walk righteously. Thank you for this privilege to be here. I ask you to dispatch your angels. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit of God move mightily in our midst. Lord, we thank you. Let your presence descend. We are trusting you this morning that the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. Holy Spirit, we want you to show up mightily. We thank you for your presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I want to talk today about genuineness, you know, our genuine love for God. Amen. Amen. When we look at uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 6, you know, thank God for uh, the support of people, uh, the people that the Lord has placed, uh, you know, uh, the privilege to know people. I was even thinking about Pastor Noba, you know, when I was in the hospital a few years back, you know, he came and visited me, you know, uh, that was the first time I will, I will be ad admitted in a hospital for 10 days, and I believe that will be the last time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So he gave me these scriptures to comfort me as I was, I'm seeing Brother Sammy and I kind of like came back to my remembrance. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6. Uh, the requirement of a believer is so important for us to know that this is not a joke. You know, we have to come to a, a point in our life to really decide, do I want to serve God or do I want to serve the devil? Amen. Hallelujah. Do I, do I want to serve God or do I want to serve what? The devil. The devil. There's no in between because we think that we are in between. Amen. There's no in between. Even people that are serving God faithfully every day, the Lord graded them and he gave them 13%. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about pastors. So, you know, at times the Lord can grade you and you think you are doing so well and you only get 6%. Amen. Hallelujah. Because this work that we are doing, if you are not praying, you are not a Christian. If you don't have passion for prayer, you can't move any spirit out of your life. Amen. So I've been talking about prayer is the master key. If we are not praying, we are not going anywhere. Amen. And I come to realization that as a pastor, you shouldn't sleep at night. If you are sleeping at night, you are just wasting your time. Amen. Because we are dealing with spirits that are influencing people to behave the way they are behaving. That's why we are seeing so many ch 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 challenges in marriages. You know why? Because there's something is talking to you. And you know something that is talking to you at times. Have you ever gone to on top of the building, like a five-story building or 14-story building? You hear a voice. Something says jump. Have you ever... You know, had that experience before? You are enjoying the view, and all of a sudden, a voice comes to you and it says what? Jump. Yeah. So if you could have an experience like that, how much more your daily work? Amen. Just money your own business. Amen. And you are influenced by a demon Amen. or an evil spirit. And you are not praying. You haven't even prayed the whole day. You see the error now? So for us to do this work, Jesus is an, our example. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for the prayer that you prayed this morning. That was powerful, Sister Marsha. Amen. Because I was going to cancel it. 
But the Lord has to help us. We cannot do any ministry without prayer. That's why we have churches, but they don't have time for prayer. Amen. How are we going to go forth? If Jesus Christ came and he was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, preparing himself and he was led to the wilderness to pray. Because what we are fighting, we are not seeing these spirits and they are real. But the plan of the evil spirit is to make sure that we are not fulfilling the will of God. And if we don't push that spirit away, we cannot, we cannot accomplish what heaven wants the church to accomplish on the earth. Because the Bible says, let the kingdom of God come. He wants the kingdom of God to be established where? On the earth. And we cannot do it without prayer. That's why we are having our all night prayer. I'm not changing this. All night prayer from 10 to 5 o'clock in the morning. And I realize the most effective time to pray is between 3 and 2 o'clock at night. Because those are the times that the demons come to, to get some things done on the earth when we are sleeping. So I've been pleading for us to come as a corporate. When we pray corporately, it's so effective. Because you are needed in this assignment. So if we want changes in this land, we have to pray. If we want the devil, the demons, all this evil spirit to influence the earth, let's stop praying. We're going to see what's going to happen. Because when you see nations fighting nations right now, that is not normal. For what is happening, nation fighting nations right now, it's not normal. If you see Ukraine and what is happening in Russia, it's not normal. Because somebody must be influencing what? The leader to behave that way. And because people are not praying, now they are embracing what? His leadership. That is not from God. Because the earth has been given to what? The children of men. So we are the one in control, not God. And God cannot intervene with humanity until we what? When we ask him to do what? To intervene in the affairs of men. Let's start with... Uh, that's why at times I just weep. I'm like, what is going on? What is happening with people? Amen. Hallelujah. Because some people are in and out. And we have to continue to pray for them to be in all the way. Because that's the passion of God. Everybody is going through all kinds of challenges. So you cannot discredit anybody. We just have to continue to pray for God's mercy. Amen. For people to be what? To be on fire for God. Amen. To be consistently what? Faithful. Amen. Amen. Not to be distracted. Not to deviate for the, from the plans of God. Amen. The only religion that they fight each other is Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only cre the religion that they are not in agreement is what? Is the Christianity. It's really a shame. And the only, the only religion that people are not committed to prayer is Christianity. Even if you serve the devil, he will flog you for not chanting the whole night. Hallelujah. Because at times we wake up in the morning, the whole day no prayer. Because you are busy doing something that are not relevant. Those things are not relevant. What is important is, to, is the prayer that you pray for God to assist you, to give you the fuel and the speed to function effectively and to be, able, to, to, to be able to accomplish his will on the earth. So with the grace of God, for us to receive the grace of God, we need to come with what? Get together with what? The creator of the universe. Who has given us the privilege to be on the earth. Are we in 1 Peter chapter 1, yeah. verse 6? I've seen medical doctors. I, I sent one video to somebody. Seven medical doctors in a family. Seven of them. They're all medical what? Doctors. They all died in one month. Every one of them. You saw that video? One month, they all died. Because at times, you cannot depend on your intelligence. 
God wants us to depend on what? On him. Not on your wisdom. Our help is God. That's, that's the only help. If he fires you, we don't have any help. If, if God li- lives here alone, we need to weep. The person is finished. Hallelujah. Are we in First Peter chapter 1, verse 6? In this, you greatly rejoice. Can I start from verse 3? Yeah. You know, the Bible is so good. It's a food for the, for the spirit. Yeah. For your spirit to rejoice again. Amen. And for worry, challenges of life to leave you. Just continue to think about the word of God. In that situation, God will perform miracles. See, I'm expecting miracles. Look at God. He's blessed forevermore. It's a blessed. We are not trying to convince God to be blessed. He's already blessed. It's, can we go to verse 3? It says, blessed be the, fa- the God of, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy. The mercy is so much that he said, you know what, regardless of what you have done, I'm going to embrace you and I'm going to save you. So somebody, nobody can discredit you that you are not saved. And the mercy of, no, the mercy of, no, of, the mercy of God is not there to rescue you and to forgive you and to wash you from all mess and to make you holy before him. Can we say thank you, Jesus, for your mercy? He said, has begotten us again. Look at it, again to what? A living hope. Say, I have hope. Now the hope that you have is alive. He is not removing the hope. The hope has breath. The hope is living. The hope is vibrant. The hope of eternal life. The hope of everlasting life. The hope that you be together with him for eternity. He he called it what? A living word. Hope. He said, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, that's the witness. Because he's not, he's alive. And because he's alive, you know, is to let us know that what God is saying, he's not just talking. This is real. Now, verse 4, he said, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not what? Fade away. Reserve in heaven for you. Can we applaud Jesus? Look at what it says. It says, who are what? Kept by what? By the power of God through faith. For salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. See, that's me. Now the Lord is keeping you through the power of what? He said, you are kept by the power of God. Say, I'm kept by the power of God. Now, if you are, you know, in relationship with God, how much more that power is increased? Think about your relationship with God. Think about you talking to God. Think about him inviting him in your affairs. That's too much power for you to be taken out before your time. You see how God is speaking to us? He said, in this, you greatly what? Rejoice. In this, what, what is causing your heart to rejoice? Because of what you have heard. It says, through, though now, a little while, if need be, you have been what? Grieved with various trials. We are talking about issues. We are talking about sorrow. We are something that just hits you. You are fine. Something comes and just hits you. Amen. Bad report. But look at 7. It said that what? The genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes. Though it is tested by what? Fire. Maybe what? Found to praise, to honor, to glory at the revelation 
of Jesus Christ. Can we shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah? Regardless of the issue, see, I'm not shaking. Regardless of the bill, see, I'm not shaking. Regardless of the report, see, I'm not shaking. Regardless of the sickness, see, I'm not shaking. Now God is equipping, he has equipped us to shake those things away. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I thank you for what you have done. You've laid your hands upon me. And I thank you that I have a genuine love for you. You said in your word, the genuineness of my faith is more precious than gold. That perishes. If I'm, be, if I'm tested. If I'm being tested. I'll be found. In praising God. In honoring God. In adoring God. In glorifying God. In rejoicing at his presence. Say Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. I belong to you. For life in Jesus' name. Let's pray in tongues. Rakata bakoto sata. Sequada kasakata. Lekugada. Break that katakata sorrow. Break that depression. Break that evil report. Break it off of you. Sakadobo sakadabase. Shakude kasagada. Sekuda gaseke. Lekwaga. Betigada. Lekwaga. Every evil plan. Break it. Lekwa gadaga bata boto bata sheku dabasa seku gala soga dega selwa gada sakado shakunde katunde katunde haya ya 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 yekuga 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 sala 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 haya ya 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 reka go ga ge ga go ga ge ga go ga ge Shala la 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 sakata sekuda kasa sekuda kasa yaka 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 ye you kada buka sabasa hayakunda kasa da hayakunda kasa hayakunda kasa lekuda kasa hala kasa hayakasa in Jesus name in Jesus name. Let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now lift up your hands. Just receive that anointing. Ha! Ay, 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 ay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Sister Elsie, just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands, Sister Elsie. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody stand behind her? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for fire. Fire for your presence. Fire! Take it in Jesus' name. Take it! Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 Katanda kasakata. Hi, 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sister Knight, come, come, sit there. Hi, 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 hi. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. 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 Ha. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ha. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him, hallelujah. Thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The level of anointing that God wants us to walk in, we, we, have not, we, we, we don't have no clue. The mantle that God has for us, the level of power. Because right now, to function as a believer, people of God, we cannot be normal. We have to be a life-giving word. Spirit. You are not a living being. That's why God rescued us and gave us the Holy Ghost. Because what the enemy is doing right now, the plans they have for the church is to make sure the church goes into extinction. For you to stand and to defend the church, you have to be on fire. Look, let's look at book Luke. We're going to go so fast because of time. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, I'm in love with Jesus. The Lord wants to redirect our hearts towards God. So we want to see what are the determining factors of an authentic you know, to have what? An authentic love for God. Amen. What are the signs and implications? What are the commitments that are necessary? Amen? Let's look at Luke chapter 10, verse 20, 29, 27. My prayer, your prayer for me is to make sure pastor is not sleeping at night. No sleep. When I come here, I want to come with fire. Because without fire, you cannot, do the, you cannot do the ministry. I'm just telling you the truth. Yes. I read the book of uh, uh, Smith Wigglesworth. Yes. The guy prayed every half an hour. Yes. Can you say half an hour? Yes. What kind of lifestyle is that? Even he was going somewhere with some people in the car. He screamed. He said, stop. Stop the vehicle. And they were like, what crime have, you, have we committed? And the guy said, let's pray. We have, he hasn't prayed in the last 30 minutes. If you are living as a Christian and you are not praying, you are deceiving yourself. If you don't like it, I'm just telling you the truth. Because at times I call some members and I ask them, how's your prayer life? They say, Pastor, I want to be true with you. I don't pray. So why are you following Jesus if you are not praying? Because for him to fulfill his agenda on the earth, he's looking for a vessel to pray for his will to manifest on the earth. No prayer, no power. No prayer, no protection. So for us to enforce divine protection, we need to pray. 
And for your angels to grow wings, to, be, to have muscles, to have ranks, is because of your prayer. If you are not praying, then you have some baby angels following you around. And the enemy can come and arrest them. Just like what happened to Daniel. Amen. The angel came and he what? He was what? Arrested. He was detained. And they had to send another angel to rescue him. Now, Luke 10, 27. Are we there? It says, he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your what? Your heart. Say my heart. Now your heart in the realm of the spirit, your heart and your spirit is interchangeable. Amen. It can be your spirit because your real you is your spirit. And the Lord wants your spirit to be in love with him. With all your soul. Say all, all, your, all my soul. Now in the area of the soul I've been talking about is your emotion, your intellect, your imagination has to be able to determine, to equip, to nourish your spirit. That's why the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when you receive, you know, the word of God is to really change our word, the mind, amen, the way you look, your outlook, and to change your attitude. So without having, receiving the word of God, we cannot have a, the right attitude towards God. Amen. So coming together and having discussion and having intimacy, having fellowship. You know, you see uh, in, in, the, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse, uh, verse 14, it says, uh, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. the love of God, yes. and the what? The communion, the, fe the fellowship, the association. The relationship, the intimacy, the transformation of the Holy Ghost to be with you. So until we begin to eat the word, fellowship, discuss, worship, praise God. Guess what? There will be transformation taking place. The Holy Ghost will enter you. Then you will be clothed with fire, with power. Because you gave, you gave him access to take over your soul. We can't do anything for God without prayer. Forget it. If you, if you are not praying and you are reading the Bible, all these things I'm saying, you'll, you'll be irritated. Amen? Because for you to understand this depth of the Bible, you need the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have relationship with the Holy Spirit, you cannot know the Word of God. What you are reading is history. Hallelujah. So anybody that prays is a humble person. Amen. That's why the Bible says uh, in, in 2, Corinthians, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 4, it says, if my people who are called by my name shall what? So for you to say, I, I like to pray, I love to pray, you are, God has to make you, shape you, Amen. take away the old nature so you can be humble enough and talk to him. Just to have a relationship with him, that's all he's asking. We make time for other people to have. If you are talking to your friends more than God, it's an, it's an error. If you have a friend that you talk to that friend more than an hour, and you pray to God less than an, an, an hour, that means God is jealous. He's jealous about your word, relationship, because you love your friend more than God. Are we getting something here? And it says what? With all your word. Oh, are we looking at the Bible? We, we talk about the heart already. The soul. With all your word. Say with all your strength. This is the only nation that when it rains, people go to, don't, they don't go to church. When it rains, even at times, I don't want to be making confession. I have to be saying, Lord, bring them in. So we can have intimacy with you. Amen. Anytime it's too cool, it's too nice. People just say, you know what? Let me just chill. God understands. He just told you to love him with all your strength. Even you are sick with flu. You know you can go everywhere. But church? You say, God, you know. I'm, I'm, I don't, you know. That never happened to me. We sleep with food. For, they have medications. This is not in Africa that you hit with malaria. You can't go anywhere. If that hits you, 
You are out, not down. Out. <laughs> Amen. But, my, but Flo, you, you can still go anywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is correcting the church. He said, love me with all your war. Strength. If you are praying at night, you're tired. You hold the wall. You hold something and you begin to pray in tongues. If you have to break the chair, God will replace it. It's okay. Hallelujah. I've been, at times I pray at night on my knees and I fell on my knees. You have to catch yourself. <laughs> and that fall will, make, will wake you up. Because it was a great fall. Is loving God with your strength. That's what I'm saying. You have to determine to go all the way and to prove to him that you love him. It's not forcing us, but you have to do it. He said, with all your mind. Your mind has to be convinced that I'm going with God all the, all the way. I'm not going to deny him. I'm not going to, you know, uh, put him away. I'm not going to be ashamed of him. That's what he says. He said, if, he said, if you are ashamed of me, and my word, in this perverted, wicked generation. He said, I'll be ashamed of you if I come, you know, in my father's glory with the holy angels. So we cannot be what? Ashamed of him. I say, and love your neighbor as yourself. So for us to love people, we need to be able to fulfill this first. Because he gives you the wisdom, the strength. You know, and the grace to do it effectively. Say so thank you, Jesus. Why, why are we serving God? Say, I need help. Exodus chapter 10, verse 4. I'm going to go very quick because we have no, uh, lesser time. Amen. And I want you to get something before you go home. Amen. Exodus chapter 10, verse 4. We see Exodus chapter 10, verse 4. No, that's not it. That's not it. Exodus chapter 2, I'm sorry. 2, uh, verse 23. When people were so much afflicted by these slave masters, amen, the Bible says the children of Israel, they groan because of what? Bondage. Can we say bondage? They cried out. Can we say they cried out? And their cry came to God, came up to God because of what? Of the bondage. See, this nation, we have not seen bondage. They have not seen problem. Because when you see a problem, you cry before God. And guess what? God will show up. He will show you, he will show up to carry you, to embrace you. Because of the mercy of God. Amen? Let's continue. Now, if God could, now 24, and God heard their word, groaning. That means, that, that, that has passed to asking. He has passed to crying. You are what? The problem hits you so hard. You begin to do what? Groan. And God remembered what? His covenant with what? With Abraham. God made a covenant with you. He expects you to cry out. He comes to rescue you. And he has what? An instruction for you through his covenant. Now what is, it? What is that instruction? Look at somebody say, what is that instruction? Let's go to Exodus. Let's go to, that. Let's go to uh, Exodus. Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. Let's do it quickly, quickly, quickly. He said, he said, I will certainly be with you. I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign that you, that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt. Can we read the rest? One, two, three. You shall serve God on this mountain. Now let's look at uh, verse, uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 18. Quickly, quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go down because of time. It says, now, please, let us go three days' journey 
with the, in, into the wilderness that we, that we may what? Can we read it? One, two, three. That we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Now we are seeing what here? What is, what is standing out here? Can we say serving God? Can we say sacrifice unto God? Now, let's look at the fourth point, uh, another point here. Exodus chapter 4, verse 23. Are we there? Exodus chapter 4, verse 23. So I say to you, let my son go, that he may what? Can we say serve, him, serve me? Now, let's look at Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. Quickly, let's do it quickly. Amen. It says, afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in, and told who? Pharaoh. Pharaoh. And he said, the Lord God of Israel. One, two, three. Let's read it. Let my people go that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. Let's read another one. Exodus chapter 7 verse 16. Let's, go, let's do it quickly. 7, 16. 7, 16. Can we do it? Let's read it. One, two, three. You shall say to him, Lord God of Hebrew. Sent me to you, saying, Let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. Can we say amen? amen. Let's look at two more or three more. It's Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. Let's do it. 8, verse 1. Let's, let's read it from Let my people go. Let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus chapter 9, verse 1. Let my people go that they may serve me. Let's look at the last one. Exodus chapter 10 verse 3. Are we there? Let my people go that they may serve me. And the church said, If you are living on the earth and you are not serving God, I have to cry for you. Because God is pleased with people that are willing to do what? To serve God. If God saved you and you don't have time to serve God, it's a shame. Because people cried. They were in slavery from, for how many years? Can we say 400 years? And the Lord did not rescue them. Because they didn't have the heart for God. They were in bondage. Enslaved. Because they, could not, they were not aware of God. God says, I'm going to leave you alone. But if you want me to help you, I want something in return. Amen? What is it demanding? For you to, for, for you to do what? For you to do what? For you to do what? It's an error for you to say, I'm, you know, I'm going to heaven, and you don't have time for God. You say, I just want to see God. And you, don't, you didn't love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your what? So, do we get that? So it's an error to say, I'm living on the earth, and you have no time for God. Say, Lord, help me. Hey, Lord, help us. Now, let's look at, let me defend what we're talking about here. Is it okay if we go to Luke yes. chapter 4, verse 4? Amen. Don't say you have read this. You read the Bible a thousand times. Just a thousand and one time, God will give you a revelation. The same scripture. Because the word of God is for humble people. He said, those who hunger, say, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be what? Filled. That's serving God. Are we in Luke chapter 4? Now, we want to look at something in Luke chapter 4 because we've read this so many times. It's Jesus answered, he said, it is written, man shall not what? Live by bread alone, by every word of God. So now we are feasting what? We are nourishing ourselves through the word of God. Say, I'm nourishing myself. Because for us to live on this earth, your spirit needs to be nourished. 
Now, let's look at the next one. Verse 5. It says, the now, then, the devil do what, did what? He said, taking him up to the high mountain, showed him all the kingdom of this world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all authority, amen, all authority I will give you and their what? Glory. For this has been what? Delivered to me. And I will give, to, I will give it to whomever I wish. Amen. And therefore, you will what? If, therefore, if you worship before me, all will be what? Yours. Now look at the exchange. Look at the trap of the enemy. Look at, the, you know, look at what the enemy is doing right now. Jesus came from a, a, for, for an assignment on the earth. Now the enemy came to do what? To test him. Can we say test? test. This is test is for every believer. To trade your assignment for something else. Amen. Amen. To trade your word. Because he had to entice him with the magnificence of the earth. The excellency of what you know, Jesus saw. Amen. Hallelujah. We're talking about the preeminence, the dignity, the grace for, for him to do what? Acquire the earth. Acquire business. Acquire what? You know, institutions. Acquire what? You know, uh, properties. So all that the enemy showed him, he said, you know what? What I want you to do, trade your partner. You know, Focus on your focus on this on this word on your properties. Focus on the work of your hands. Amen. Exchange, you know, what your mission to please the Father in worship, in songs. Turn your back and embrace what I've presented before you. That was the test. Can we say the test? And this is the test that we are, we are seeing people right now. People are spending time with their, with their cell phone. They are spending more time with their laptop. But there's no time for God. So we have some sophisticated what? Idols. It's not an idol. But when you begin to worship your computer, you spend the whole 24 hours because you want to make money. You just traded your life, your soul, for an idol. So right now we have idols that are what? Sophisticated. All kinds of electronics that has become our God. We can't let it go. Because we use it to replace what? We, we are praying, God, give me this device. And after you receive the device, you have no time for God. And that becomes what? Somebody's worship. Becomes an idol. Are we getting that? So J Jesus was so focused. He said, you know what? I'm not going to receive all this. Amen. You are not going to you know, change my, my mindset. For me, I didn't come to obtain the things of the earth. I came for, for an assignment. And the one that you should worship is God and him alone. Can we say test? Now, this test comes to, to, to the body of Christ. Amen. Because this test came to him because he was led by the spirit into the wilderness. He was not led to go and be listening to the enemy, what he wants to entice him with. He was led on an assignment. And the second you know, point that the, the enemy was telling me, he said, turn this stone to what? To bread. Now, is he supposed to do that? He was the son of God. He knows his personality. He knows his divine nature. He doesn't have to prove it to any, anybody. And the Lord did not tell him to go and turn what? Stone to bread. He told him to fast. So at times we use the anointing for our own word. Self-benefit. Amen. Hallelujah. For basic needs. Because we say it's what? It's, a, it's what? Basic needs. And it's necessary. You see how the enemy is so what? Subtle. And the third test. Can we say test? So these are the tests that deter us people from worshiping God. No passion for God anymore because you are caught up with the things of the earth. You are caught up by what the enemy has influenced you 
influence your thoughts. Amen. For you to do what? To compromise your faith. And the third point was what? For him to do what? To be a superstar. He said, just jump the cliff. They will catch you. You know what that means? Let me entertain people. That's entertainment. Is that not entertainment? Yes, it is. We like to be entertained. Somebody jump off the roof. You clap your hands. <laughs> is it be a what? Look, is that not Superman? Superman, that Jesus is going to catch you. The Lord did not say that. He said, go and pray for, 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 for men to be saved, for people to come to repentance. That was the key. Not for God to prove something that was not necessary. So at times we are embark on things that are not necessary. And we are thinking that God is going to approve it. People of God, let's stay focused on the, on the, on the principles of the gospel. Hallelujah. So we see the test is to do what? To shift you from completely from the assignment. Can we say test? Yes. Let's go to the book of James. It's good to follow the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot be a believer and say you are not tested. You are kidding me. James chapter 1 verse, verse 12. Can we say test? test? Can we say test? test? God is going to test your faith whether it's genuine or not. And what causes us to stumble is some of the things that you like and you refuse to fix it. Your Amen. And those are weaknesses. Those are things that we are dealing with and we are not let go. You love God, but at the same time, you don't want to let go. So God is concerned about what? Our attitude. Amen. For him to give us what? A clear perspective of what he wants to do through us. Because if the attitude is not right, guess what? You're going to mess up. Say right attitude. That's why he talks about the beatitude. But let's look at, uh, let's look at, Beatitude is, is so much is about attitude, and then God gave what? His vision. Do we see that? Are we here or are we home? Now say, blessed is, the, is, blessed is the man who endures what? Temptation. When he has been approved, he will receive what? The crown of life. See, the, work, the, the instructions of God comes with a condition. So we cannot say, I'm loving God, and when he tests you, you fail the test. So anytime you are tested, you're supposed to pass the test. Say, I'm passing all tests. Now it says, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So it comes with what? Test. And it comes with what? Reward. So it's going to give us an eternal reward, but we have to be tested. He said, let no one say he is tempted. You know, he said, let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be what? Be tempted by, the, by evil. Because you saw what happened. He refused to be tempted, allowed the devil to tempt him. Because he focused on what? On the principles. He said, no, that does he himself tempt anyone? But 14, let's look at 14. He said, but each one is tempted when he is what? Drawn away by his own what? Desires. There's no excuse. We are giving the excuses because it's what you desire to do. It's like a ple you, have, you have deep pleasure in what you are doing. And God is not forcing us to go contrary to his will. So we have to be determined to do what? To humble ourselves and go all the way with his principles. Amen. Say salvation is personal. I think I learned that from Sister Anne. Hallelujah. Sister Anne is in the house. 
Oh, praise God. Can we say, ha, salvation is personal. Salvation is personal. Thank you, Jesus. And what? Enticed. Can we say enticed? enticed? So we need to break what? Whatever is enticing you to shift you from God. Whatever you desire so much and is preventing you to go all the way. It hinders your word, your passion for God. Amen. Just like reading the Bible, it's like if you don't read it, you cannot live. If you don't read your Bible, you cannot what? Live. Is that important? And if you don't pray, it's like you just, when you are out there, you are out there where? Naked. Anything can bite you. Amen. And if you say you don't want to pray, you just like a pray. You are what? You are, the, you are what? You are just a prey to the enemy. Because he's looking for something to eat. And it's not you. Say it's not me. Say it's not me. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we see what is happening right now that we have to make up our minds to please God. It's something that you have to determine in your heart to do. Nobody can force you to serve God until you have that word, desire to, to, to follow after God beautifully. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Therefore, having these promises, behold, oh, let me, let me take my time. I think we have 10 more minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is where we are sowing what? A good seed. And anytime you put the word in your heart, you are sowing what? The best seed that is needed for your spirit man. And that's the word of God. So now we can see the essence of coming together, coming to church, to strengthen each other, to build one another up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So we are equipping ourselves. Can we say equipping ourselves? Now, the Bible says, therefore, can we, can we see this? Let's, let's read this, one, two, three. Are we there? Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Are we, are we ready? Yes. One, two, three. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all what? Filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Perfecting what? Holiness in the fear of God. And it just said, Amen. Amen. There are some things that we are doing is filthy before God. You know it. I don't have to go deep in, in terms of that. God has presented promises for the people. And we're going to obtain those promises supernaturally. But these are the things that defiles what? The flesh. And it says what? Let's cleanse ourselves from it. Amen? Why are we cleansing ourselves from it? Uh, uh, Luke chapter 24 verse 49. And then we're going to see why. One is... Look, look, I'm saying two scriptures at the same time. You need to forgive me. Amen. Say, I'm forgiven. forgiven. Say, you are forgiven. forgiven. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Lord wants to really equip us. He wants us to be really filled, you know, function effectively as a believer. Amen. Hallelujah. But we think that the gift that God has given us you know, you know, it gets to the place that the gift is so flat and it's monotonous and it's, it's become tedious. We are even agitated when we pray in tongues. Even when somebody is praying in tongues, you are upset. <laughs> because you think the word, you are hearing that tongue, it becomes what? Monotonous. <laughs> you say, what is it saying? Baba, 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 baba. And that baba, you are, you are destroying all kinds of things in the realm of the spirit. And the person sitting right, now, right next to you, they have no clue what you are doing. <laughs> oh, I've heard all kinds of people praying in tongues. I remember when I first started, I picked up a friend from my high school. You know, you know how you go back to 20 years, the people that are supposed to have minus, you add them again. He looked at me, I was, we are in a truck. He said, Lifei, they call me life. He said, if you pray, I will slap you. That's what he told me. 
Oh, I just, I may, I just flow with. I, I, I had to just agree with him for that time period. As soon as I dumped him, I just fired him. You cancel them from your word, from your phone booth. That's it. That's it. Because the guy refused to change. We went to church together. He refused to change. So this thing that we are living, this lifestyle is a choice. He was upset because I was praying in tongues. And this is what I'd like to do. When I'm driving, I pray in tongues. So if you are driving, you are not praying in tongues, you better be praying in tongues. You're driving half an hour, you are not praying in tongues. What are you thinking? If you are not praying in tongues, what are you thinking? You are thinking about your, you are praying your problems. That's what you are doing. If you refuse to pray in tongues for half an hour you are driving, what are you doing? Praying your what? Your problems. You are reciting what? Problems. That's what you are doing. Because you are not inviting Jesus. I remember one time I tried it. I, I had a, we had a business in those days. Uh, young at heart. And I went and got some merchandise from downtown. And I was coming down. I got out from Roscoe. I was praying just from downtown to the valley. Something entered the vehicle. The force was so powerful. I was afraid I had to pull over. Experiencing what? The Holy Ghost entered the vehicle. Entered me. <laughs> when you have that supernatural encounter, you will not stop praying. We stopped praying that it became monotonous because we are not seeing what? We are not experiencing the power of God through the gift of God. See, I have to experience the power of God through his gift. Now, it's like shifting gear. Praying in tongues is like shifting what? Gears. If you don't pray, if you don't continue to walk it, walk it out, your, that gear is not going to change. The more you pray in tongues, the more your tongues will change. Yes. After a while, your tongue, you'll be going to be enjoying you. It will sound like French. I like French. You know, after a while, it will sound like what? Arabic. It's because you are not praying that much. That's why it's not changing. If you are praying five minutes, you are deceiving yourself. If you are praying 15 minutes, that is, for this time, that's what you did last, week, last year. Say, Lord, increase my capacity. Put that fire in me to pray through and to grow in the spirit. Now, growing in the spirit is like you have shifted gears. You are praying so fast that you are covering so much in a lesser time. That's growing. And when you see Jesus, when he prays, he groans. Because somebody was saying Jesus came and prayed with him. And then when he grabbed the prayer point, he just said, mm. and that was it. Amen. If you don't believe it, I don't care. I just told you the truth. <laughs> hallelujah. Can we say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Ha! Mm. Ah. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. 24. 12.49. It says, behold. Let me read it in Amplify. Listen carefully. Amplify. Amplify. Luke 24. Uh, 49. Let's read it. Behold. I fought for you. What my father has promised. But remain in the city of until you are clothed power. Hallelujah. Now we are in California. Hallelujah. We are in California. We are in different cities. But he's saying that when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you'll be clothed with what? 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 What is about to happen in this nation? We need to be clothed with what? Amen. Another version says to be fully equipped. Amplify, uh, regular amplify. To be fully what? Equipped with power from on high. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Now, these are the warnings. I'm going to stop with warnings. Amen. One is that we need to control the flesh. Amen. Amen. When the flesh is out of the way, it hinders us from pleasing God. Yeah. Amen. Can we look at the warnings? Yeah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Let's look at this quickly, 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 quickly. I have five more minutes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we enjoying the word? Yeah. Is the Holy Spirit helping us? Yeah. Are we going to please God? Yeah. Are we going to be on fire for God? Are we going to defend the gospel? And you will never be ashamed of the gospel. You will never deny Jesus. In Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Amen. This, this, sign, this thing that we are doing, you have to be determined. Amen. Matthew 5, 19. Are we there? Whoever, you know, who, I'm going to read this quickly. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments, teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Say, whoa. It says, whoever does not or teach them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And 20 says what? I say to you that unless the righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter what? The kingdom of heaven. So the Lord is giving us warning here. That your righteousness, you know, your, our righteousnesses, you know, must exceed what? The righteousness of the, the, all the righteousnesses of Pharisees and Sadducees. So he wants some, you know, some dedication from, from improvement, you know, change your ways and get involved and be more serious. Amen. 520. Let's look at oh, you know, 522. Therefore, no, I'm sorry. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of what? Judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Reka, shall be in danger of what? The council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of what? God says, I'm going to send you to fire, hellfire. Say, not me. We cannot be cursing people and be saying you are a fool. And be saying all kinds of things. So God wants us to walk in a, in a different, we have to have a different mindset. We are serving him and he wants them to be saved. We don't want to add to their problems. Amen? 527, the same Matthew chapter 5. I have three more minutes. Hallelujah. It says, you who, you have heard what? You have heard that it is said to those of old, you shall not what? Commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman and lost for her has already committed what? Adultery with her in his heart. Say, Lord, help us. Don't get excited with the men with all muscles. Amen. Leave them alone. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Those are fake. You need somebody to be spiritually built. Amen. Hallelujah. You need the right one. The Lord needs to touch your eyes to give you the right one. Say, Lord, give me the right one. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you have the right one, you have to stop looking. Amen. <laughs> right, brother Samuel? <laughs> Hallelujah. I love my brother. He's in agreement. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, if your eyes causes you to sin, pluck it out. Cast, you know, and cast it from you. For it is more what? Profitable for you that one of you, your members perish than for your whole body to be cast where? So even lusting after a woman, you can, God can send you to hell. So we need to know all this. We cannot say, well, you know, 
you know, this is me, I just want to be me. No, you cannot be you when you are with Jesus. You need to be who? Like Jesus. Jesus, period. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you want to see another one? Oh, can you handle this? Yes. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. It says, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will what? Also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither your Father forgive what? Your trespasses. So we're not going anywhere if you, don't, you are not following the instructions. So the, he's not compromising and we have to let go. Say, I have to let go. Say, I have to let go. And let God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think my time is over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord wants us to understand the principles. Amen. We have to be clear about what we are doing. You know, he's giving us, uh, you know, how to be more genuine. Our love has to be genuine towards God. He wants it to be real. He wants it to be authentic. Amen. He, he's not changing his mind because he called you. He called you for an assignment. And the Lord wants us to be fruitful. Amen. Amen. Because we came unfruitful and he wants us to be what? Fruitful. We came unfaithful and he wants us to be what? Faithful. Amen. Amen. He died for us and he wants you to die with him. Amen. When you die with him, you shall be raised with him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And when we remove all these uh, weaknesses from our lives, amen, all the sin, all the filthiness, the Bible says we shall be glorified with him. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So we are seeing people this morning in this church that they'll be what? Glorified together with God. Amen. Hallelujah. If we honor him, he will honor us. So this morning we've been honoring God. We've been embracing his word. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is moving in our midst. Amen. We are not blaspheming the Holy Spirit. We reverence the Holy Spirit. We accept what he's doing that is true. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Lord is touching us this morning. He's preparing our hearts to be used mightily for him. Amen. And it's, the, it's you that he's looking for. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the transformation. Thank you for touching us this morning. In Jesus' name. Let's lift.